Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Finland once again. And that of course means that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from the latest instalment of the Riku box. So first and foremost, a massive shout out and thank you to Riku Sanaho, my Finnish beer mule. It's thanks to him that you guys get to enjoy all these nice Finnish beer reviews here on Rampant Lion Reviews. A lovely guy, very knowledgeable when it comes to beer, and he of course has his own little beer mule network within Finland, and then he sends stuff over to me here in Sweden as well. So as always, a massive kipis and kitos to Riku for making these Finnish reviews possible. But uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a couple of times before. I think this is review number four from these guys, if I remember correctly. We've tried a good few styles from this brewery, and they always tend to be pretty solid, actually. But the beer we're looking at today is a kind of special release from them, I guess we could say. It's a style that we haven't tried from them before, and it is one of these styles, I guess, that you could say is up and coming. A little bit more across Europe just now. So needless to say I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah for this review then we are going to head to Lapin Ranta once again and that means that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from the wonderful Panimoitio to you. So this particular beer is one of their big sour beers. It's called Lunatic. It comes in at 7% ABV and they're describing this one as a quince, sea buckthorn and honey American style wild ale. So uh, yeah, if memory serves me correctly, when Riku asked me about this beer, there were two or three that they were releasing at the same time and I think I just picked uh, I think I asked Riku which one was his favourite and then he said oh this this one and that was the main reason why that we chose this out of the three or four that were available. But as I say Riku knows his stuff, he always picks me out some really good stuff so uh, yeah I'm really looking forward to trying this one. Our first American style wild ale from Pani Moitio to you and uh, they're supposed to be good at these as well. So let's crack on then and see what this one is going to have in store for us. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done it from Panioitio to you before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So if you want to find some beers, go to the little search bar at the top, put your hometown, state, county, province, prefetch, or whatever you like in there. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that though, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Finnish playlist along with many other things. And that is of course being added to whenever I get the chance. And you can check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well. But uh, yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a little bit about Pani Moitio to you. Um, so, as I mentioned to you earlier, Pani Moitio to you are based in Lapinranta in the South Karelia region in the southeast of Finland, quite close to the Russian border if I remember correctly. And the company was founded back in 2015 by Tomas Metiniemi, who has a background in restaurants, and Yuka Mononen, who has a background in healthcare. But they were joined a little bit later on by Samuel Koskinen, who is now also a shareholder and active in the company. But this brewery is very small in capacity. They operate a British-built 500-litre brew kit, and they only produce in the region of 50,000 litres of beer per year. And it's Tuomas that is the main brewer. So their New England IPAs are widely regarded as some of the, of some of the best in Finland. But apparently, um, for quite a while, they were only making these beers for restaurants because they were having difficulties with the bottling and canning of this particular style. I think it was oxidation problems they were having. But their lower ABV beers can now be found in supermarkets across Finland, and they've also begun to export their beers to a few countries as well, uh, with the cooperation of uh, Coolhead Brewery from Helsinki. They're one of the first. Those guys in Salama are probably the two Finnish breweries that you are most likely to come across outside of Finland. But uh, over the last few years, they've They've continued to develop the brewery's infrastructure, they've developed new recipes, brewed lots of new styles, and as of May 2023, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 270 different kinds of beer 
according to Untapped. The last one we reviewed, if I remember correctly, was from their Black Barrel series. So um, I think it was a barley wine or was that an Imperial Stout? I forget. But uh, yeah, before that we reviewed the Pilsner and an Imperial Stout. And I think it was a Barley's Barley Wine last time. And I have asked Riku to get a hold of the Black Barrel Imperial Stouts for me, if I uh, remember correctly. But yeah, like I say, this uh, Wild Barrel series of beers that they have, it's supposed to be very, very nice, and these guys are reported that one of the best um, sour beer producers in Finland just now, or the, yeah, I guess we could say one of the best um, old school Belgian woody type sour, sour beer producers in Finland just now. But like I say, a very, very well respected Finnish brewery, a little bit hard to come across, but if you do get the chance, I would really recommend that you have a look at these guys, because the beers that Riku has sent me from them so far have all been pretty damn good actually. But um, yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see what it's going to have in store for us. That's everything I can really tell you about Panimoitio to you for the moment. So if you want to learn a little bit more, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's go on. Have a wee look at this beer itself. So I'll just let you have a little closer look at the artwork on this one before we open up. I have to say, I do quite like this. And I like the name of it, Lunatic, as well. That probably played a factor in me deciding that this was the one that I uh, I wanted when Riku asked me about these. As I say, I'm sure there was three or four. There you can see the Panimoitio Tuyu symbol. And it tells you a little bit about the beer on the back here as well. And just so you can see the full bottle. It's a very nice shape, this one, actually. Uh, but yeah, it tells us on the back here, this is a Kinsa Sea Buckthorn and Honey beer, this one. So a blend of different gold nails aged from 10 to 12 months in red wine and bourbon barrels with several different cultures of Britannomyces and lactic acid producing bacteria aged for an additional 6 months after the barrels on local Kinsa's Sea Buckthorn and Honey and it was apparently bottled in January of 2022. But it comes in at 7% ABV. And uh, yeah, it should be quite interesting this one. I have to say, I don't think I've had a quince sour before. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had quinces before, come to think of it. Um, but they are these little kind of bright yellow, uh, almost pear looking type things. But the skin's a little bit more like a lemon, if if you like. So I honestly can't, I honestly don't think I've had quinces before. Sea buckthorn I have had, this little really sharp tart berry sort of thing. And then honey, of course, you know, should be quite nice. This should make for a really interesting mix, actually, to see how it goes together. Um, I couldn't tell you how much I paid for this bottle. Uh, I think it's probably about 15 euros, maybe a little bit more than that. I'm really not sure. But this was another one of my kind of fuck it, why not moments to try something interesting. 750 millilitres, though, 7% uh, American style wild ale, this one, with uh, Kinsa Sea Buckthorn and Honey. Let's get this guy open and see what it's all about. The Lunatic 2022 edition, I should add, from Panimoitio Tuyu in Latin Ranta, South Karelia, in Finland. So, let's do this. Let's have a look at this. A little bit of smoke on the opening there as we open up. Not sure how well you're going to see that. But let's see what this beer is going to have in store for us. We'll be a bit careful on the pour because sometimes these sour beers can behave. A little bit funnily, but there we are. That does look pretty nice. Head is disappearing very quickly. So, you can see that when we poured this beer, it poured with about a half, maybe a one third or half finger of a frothy, I would say kind of cream coloured head there. But that has faded away to be pretty much nothing, and you've just got a little bit of a foamy ring around the edge of the glass. So, you can see that there. That does look pretty nice, and the light obviously is reflecting off the, gra the, the glass into the camera lens there. Forgot to show you the bottle cap, of course it was just a plain black bottle cap on this one. But colour-wise, this beer does look pretty nice. It's actually got a lovely kind of amber tint to it. And actually, this time it's about the same colour on the camera, I can see, as it is to the, the naked eye. So remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is going to play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrelation you do or adjuncts you put in will affect the colour too. So when it comes to the more kind of golden type, or golden colour I should say, sour beers like this one, your adjuncts 
and your barrels are going to play a role. You can see that the colour of this one is a kind of medium level amber, so I'm guessing a good bit of the colour will have come from the bourbon barrels. The red wine barrels might have played an influence as well. You've also got honey in here and the sea buckthorn. Uh, if I remember rightly, has quite a bit of colour to it as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if the colour in this beer is derived from a mixture of, of everything. But obviously the beer is a gold nail in the base, um, so we have to consider that as well. I think it's the, obviously this beer was going to be golden of some description, but the richness of the amber is quite interesting. The beer does have a little bit of a natural haze to it. As you can see, if I put my hands behind the, the, the glass there, it does have that little bit of natural haze to it. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the surface there, but not too much in the way of visible carbonation uh, when it comes to this beer. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't think we really need to say anything more about the appearance of this one, so we can have a little look at the uh, aroma and see what it's all about. I'm very curious of this, I got a little whiff of it as we opened up the bottle there, but let's do the aroma. Oh yeah. It does smell pretty interesting this one. It has, I will say, this beer does have a little bit of sharpness to it as we uh, as I sugar it up. So definitely some of that going on in here. Yeah, so lovely little bit of sharpness to this one. But then when your nose adjusts, you start to get all the other kind of complexities out of this beer. And this one is, of course, uh, one of the more kind of like woody, old school Belgian type sour beers as I would call it, rather than a, a kind of modern sour beer, if you like that. But I have tried a few of these kind of Pacific Northwest uh, American uh, sour beers, and they can have a hell of a sharpness to them. You know, the likes of Cascade and The Veil and all of these kind of guys. The American ones I've always found have a hell of a punch to the sourness when it comes to the beers. They're always very, very nice. But, um, yeah, I'm curious to see what this uh, finish one is going to be like, actually. So, yeah, um... On the, we'll start with the backbone of this beer then. So the backbone of the beer is obviously the woody character and you can smell. Um, the oaky notes that you get out of this are quite interesting because you've got a mixture of the American oak and the, uh, the European oak in here I would say. And remember these are different species of trees. So for me they smell and taste a little bit different. European oak tends to have a little bit more dryness to it and almost a very slight spicy character. American oak is a lot smoother I think and has a little bit more of a vanilla note to it but with this beer you can absolutely smell the um, you can absolutely smell the um, the lovely mix of smooth oaky characters in this one yeah there's a lovely smell of uh, smooth smooth oaky character in there I get a little bit of the vanilla actually and I think you know, for me, the bourbon notes are actually a little bit more prominent in the woody character of this beer than the, the red wine notes. So yeah, you've got that smooth wo woody backbone in there, a little bit of uh, vanilla. Of course, you've got a bit of a layer of kind of bourbon brown sugar in there. And it's almost got a little bit of like a Werther's Original Butter Candy type note mixing in with the vanilla in the woody side of this beer as well. So, um, yeah... The way this one goes together is quite um, is quite interesting in a sense. Um, yeah, I like that about this one for sure. Um, the woody notes in this are really interesting. I don't think I've had a beer where it's been uh, mixed red wine and bourbon barrels before, so it's giving you a really interesting note. So like I say, the bourbon sugars are a bit more, the bourbon notes within the wood are a bit more prominent for me, but then you've got the red wine richness sitting on top of that. And above that, within the beer, within the actual malty side of the beer, there's a little bit of like a kind of fresh white bready bread crust, quite a sweet white bread as well. Um, maybe a little touch of a kind of crackery note. I do wonder if this beer's got a bit of wheat in it because you can just smell that wheaty smoothness coming out of this one. Then above all of that, you've got the Werther's original kind of butter candy, butterscotchy type notes. Really lovely and smooth, actually. And then you have just a teeny little hint of like a McVitie's digestive biscuit to this one. So, um, 
yeah, the way it goes together really is very, very nice. Um, I think that covers the malty and um, yeasty kind of side of this beer, to be honest with you, yeah, from the aroma perspective. The stuff that I'm picking up is like Werther's Original Butter Candy, Butterscotch is obviously the honey. Um, but yeah, I, I think it comes across more as a kind of butterscotch, you know. I'll see how it comes out in the flavour right enough. Now, the hoppy side of this beer, this is kind of interesting because um, it's interesting to always ask sour beer brewers or blenders um, what, um, how they think about these things because uh, one of the, the mentality with a lot of the old school Belgian sour beer such as the Hoises, the Flanders Reds and so on was to use old hops that are not going to detract so much from the sourness of the beer. Um, quite a number of modern sour beer brewers don't even put hops into the, the beer these days because they say it detracts from the sourness. But you do have some breweries that will hop, will dry hop their sour beers to give them a little bit more depth of flavour. It just depends on what you want to do. Uh, I think this beer does have a little bit of um, a little bit of hop to it because I still get a wee bit of green component and it is quite smooth. There's a little bit of earthiness in there. And it's a smooth earthiness at that. There's a little touch of herbal character, some nice bright floral notes, and there's also a little bit of a kind of grassy character coming out of this one too. So on the the green component of this beer, um, in terms of the green component of this beer, the way it goes together is is really nice. It's it's probably like a little bit of Czech sats or something like that that's in here uh, to be honest with you one of, or maybe a you know a bit of Hallertau, Titnanger, Salaya, Styrian Goldings something like that it smells like it's got a little bit of noble hop character um, but it has, the more I smell of it I get a little bit more earthiness herbal character and a wee bit of the kind of floral aromatic notes so for me that's really interesting actually I do like how that uh, pieces together in this one um, yeah on the uh, yeah, on the fruity side of things, then and the adjuncty side of things with this beer, I think we've covered the hoppy side of it now. Um, on those notes, I would say that the um, the kind of fruity side of this beer is interesting. I find you have got a little bit of this kind of. Um, I'm guessing. That the sort of smoothness and stuff I'm getting out of this one, it comes across as like somewhere between like a sultana and a pear. Um, I'm guessing that that's the quince, because it's something I'm not really familiar with. It's got a little bit of like apple freshness, it's got a little bit of pear-y kind of oiliness to it, but also a little bit of that kind of sultana type quality. So um, yeah, the way that this one goes together I think is pretty, um, really is pretty nice in that particular sense. Um, but yeah, on the um, yeah on that fruity side of things, I think it does go together really, really quite well. So it does. It gets a big thumbs up from me in that sense. The sea buckthorn, you can smell at the front of your nose the kind of sour side of this beer. It has that really sharp tanniny, almost like vinous quality there in the top of the nose. But the sea buckthorn, I think, is the thing that's really given it the kind of tartness. To be honest with you. So it's kind of like, the impression I have of this one is that the, the honey is giving you a bit of sweetness, the quince is giving you a little bit of smoothness, and it's the sea buckthorn that's really giving you the kind of sharpness out of this one. So it's kind of juicy at the same time, it's got a little bit of a sharp, kind of oily character to it as well. And then, yeah, the, the, way, it, yeah, the way everything goes together in this one, to be honest with you, is pretty damn nice. I have to say that about... Um, about this beer actually it's pretty interesting I'm just really curious to try this one now um, as I always say though take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you of these beers before you get stuck into them but yeah let's have a look at this this is the lunatic a quince sea buckthorn and uh, honey American style wild ale at 7% ABV from Panimoitio Tuyu in Lapinranta South Karelia in Finland Slanja Skal Cheers Kikis Tell you something. 
that has a hell of a sharpness to it. From the aroma, you would never guess that this beer is quite as sharp as it is. It's a bit of a kick in the balls, this one. It's nice. I like it. But it mellows out really nicely. But you're always, you have to remember this with sour beers, you're always going to get a bigger impact uh, flavour from these, actually. So, um, yeah. This does mellow out really nicely. I've said in many sour beer reviews before, particularly when it comes to these older, uh, more, I say older, the more old school type sours such as this, uh, what you want is that the... Um, what you want is that the the um, for the beer to kind of to give you a bit of that sour punch in the beginning, and then for the beer to mellow out nicely. It's for me all about having a good transition with these beers, and this one delivers on that definitely. Yeah, but this one actually it really does have the American sour punch to it that even after a couple of sips that's lingering here it really is lingering in this one quite nicely so I have to compliment on that but yeah it does mellow out really nicely but yeah you have got a big big sour punch to this one I like that um yeah let's try and uh, break this beer down then and describe it as we always do so we'll take the middle third of your palate first the flavour of this one, as I would say, it is quite similar to what we I kind of thought it would be from the aroma. Otherwise, uh, other than just the sheer pungency of the sourness, but yeah, the backbone of the beer, you've got that lovely smooth kind of um, oaky character in the base there. So definitely, as you move further forward on that middle third of your palate, you get more of the American oak, the lovely smoothness in there. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, as I say, lovely smooth American oaky character in there, which is great. And further forward on that middle thirty part, you get a little bit more of the kind of vanilla quality coming out of this one. But then further back, you can feel uh, the more dry European oaky notes coming out of the beer as well. Um, but on top of the the um, the woody character, you can feel. A little bit of the kind of smooth but slightly sweet bourbon brown sugar in there and above that I think you start to get the Venice character actually uh, and I would say in the aroma on the woody side of things it was more of the kind of bourbon wood infusion that was coming out a bit more but in the flavour it's actually a bit more at balance I would say it was maybe 75% bourbon 25% uh, wine in the aroma but it's more 50-50 in, um, in the actual flavour of the beer but then above the um, above the kind of uh, wine notes, if you like, you have the, the the actual bready base of the beer. So for me, there's a little bit of that um, kind of smooth um, white bready. So you do get a little bit of that kind of smooth white bready bread crust type thing out of this one. So yeah, that white bready bread crust that comes out of this one sits there and then above that you've got a little bit of an almost sweet brown bready type thing but then you get the fluffier white bread out of the beer. I would not be surprised if this one has a little touch of, um, of wheaty character to it. There's just something about the smoothness of this beer that's telling me there might be a wee bit of uh, wheat in there. But then above the wheaty kind of the sort of more dense and smooth wheaty layer you can taste the honey in this one but as I was picking up in the as I was picking up in the um, the aroma the honey that's there it actually gives you more of a kind of like Werther's original butter candy butterscotchy type thing it's almost like above the wheaty layer you've got a little circle in the middle of your palate and there's a tiny little bit of straight up caramel in the middle, but as you move further out from that, it's more like Werther's Original Butter Candy Butterscotch. And then you also have a little bit of that more kind of um, biscuity type thing uh, coming out of it. So, yeah, the way that that goes together, I think, is um, 
is quite interesting. I do get little remnants of kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity type flavours. Uh, the further into the aftertaste, or the further out toward the edges of the palate that you go with this one. So yeah, the way that that goes together in the middle third of the palate is quite interesting. So yeah, you can feel everything in that middle uh, third of your tongue. But um, yeah. Yeah, the base of that, um, I think that covers the middle third of your palate of this one. So the border region between middle and back third of your palate, you've got a nice little bit of a kind of white bready buildup in this one. Um, and I'd say it's quite a smooth and slightly sweet white bread, but the base of that back third of your palate, the base of that... Um, back third of your palate is um, the wood there again and as I've always said more dry and bitter flavours come out further back on the palate, sweeter flavours come out further forward um, but yeah the, you get the nice dry woody uh, base to this beer in the back third of the palate and then you have a little bit of the bourbon sugar and the bourbon sugar I think it's on the back third of your palate it's definitely more of the bourbon uh, woody infusion that comes out then above that you have a bit of the bread crust, which again is a little bit drier. You've got a slightly taller and more fluffy brown bready layer, and then a slightly more, a slightly taller and more airy uh, white bready layer as well. And I think you can feel just a, a, what I suspect is a little bit of wheat just sitting above that. And it's quite a smooth wheat, but it shows you a little bit of a kind of dryness, which is interesting too. And then above all of that, on the back third of the palate, you're starting to get some of the kind of yeasty notes out of the beer. So let's have a wee look at those. So yeah, the kind of yeasty side of this beer is quite interesting, like a very light, airy, sort of brown, farmhousey bread, little touch of honeycomb in there, a wee bit of woody note, but then yeah, above that, uh, overall I would say, you've definitely feel, you can definitely feel that the back third of the palate, as it always is, the flavour is taller, and as you come further forward into the middle third of your palate, it just kind of squashes down and condenses together. So, um, yeah, the way that goes together is, is really quite nice. Um, yeah, in terms of the, the um, hoppy um, side of things with, uh, with this beer, then we'll move on to the green component of the beer. Um, in the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there. Then as you move further forward, you get a little bit of herbal character. And as you push toward the kind of front corners of your palate, you can feel a little bit of floral note. But on the sides of your palate, the hoppy character is really, it's really, really smooth, actually. And not too bitter or anything, but round the front curve of the tongue, there's a little bit of a lighter grassiness there and a wee bit more zestiness too. Um, yeah. So the way that that goes together is, is quite interesting. But the hoppy character, you can feel some of it has dropped out. But obviously, a beer like this is not going to be the most hop forward. Um, kind of beer that you're going to come across but yeah let's have a wee look at the front third of your palate then to round off the uh, the tasting section of this video and we'll look at the sour side of the beer so the border region between middle uh, between front and middle third of your palate you get a little bit of bready build up in there it's quite a dense and very smooth white bready character but um, yeah the way that that goes together I think is, is really quite nice So you can feel that they're lovely smooth white bready notes. The woody character that's in there, the woody character that comes out of this one on the front third of your palate, you do get more of the kind of bourbon smoothness there, but you also get some of the kind of wine characters coming out of it too. But it's um, the sharpness that you get with this one, obviously the sharpness comes in just behind the very front tip of your tongue, and that's where you get that sour punch out of the beer. And it's kind of interesting. Like I say, I'm not really familiar with the flavour of quince, but there's this sort of like smooth, um, kind of zesty flavour above the kind of bourbon, the, the kind of whiny notes I was talking about. You get this smooth, fruity character in there, and it's got the consistency. It kind of feels like a smooth apricot or or um, papaya or something like that, but it does have a wee bit more of a kind of citrusy, zesty 
type edge to it and I can feel that kind of coming up toward the back of that front third of your palette but then above everything else you've got that more wet and kind of punchy um, sea buckthorn type thing in there as well. Sea buckthorn is just really um, I always find with sea buckthorn it's it's quite difficult to describe the flavour of sea buckthorn succinctly because it's just it's just a, you know one of these big like sharp sour hits actually for me that's what you get <laughs> that really is what you get with um yeah that really is what you get with um uh panimo to you and and, and sea buckthorn yeah, i think well not just panimo to you but anyone that uses sea buckthorn you have to be quite careful with it because it's hit it's really potent actually so yeah um but the more you drink of this beer, obviously, the more your palate's going to adjust to it. But you can certainly feel behind that very front tip of your tongue where you've got the kind of grassy notes. That's where you get the epicenter of the sourness in the beer and the tannins and things coming out. And they do give you this little bit of a more leathery character the further into the aftertaste you go. And that builds well with the kind of honey that the beer has. But yeah, the sea buckthorn sits on top for me and the quince kind of sits underneath and gives you this zestiness. But it's like a smooth apricotty type consistency that you get out of it but then yeah the sharp uh, sea buckthorn berry type things sit on top of it so um yeah the way that that goes together is um is really really nice so that gets a big uh, thumbs up from me i think that's everything we need to say about the actual flavor of this beer to be honest with you but um yeah i think we can round off with a wee look at the mouthfeel then so for me Mouthfeel wise, this beer, it really is quite, um, it feels, it's interesting because it feels very clean but at the same time it's one of the more oily beers within this category that I've had. So maybe I'd go as far as saying that it's kind of, for me sour beers always feel a bit lighter but this one certainly is a little bit more kind of, um, it's got a little bit more of a kind of oiliness and stuff to it. So maybe go as far as saying that for a sour beer this one is pushing toward the top end and mid-bodied. Like I say, smooth carbonation, it does feel quite clean but it's a more slick and oily nature that this beer has. In terms of IBUs, I think it's quite likely very low in this one, you know, about 5, 10 IBUs, something like that. You do get a little bit of dryness out of this into the aftertaste. Pardon me. As we said, in terms of the malty barrel sort of thing, you've got the dryness and smoothness in there little bit of sweetness above that you've got a lovely kind of smooth bready character in there and another bit of sweetness I think that describes the malty side of things as well you've got a bit of sweetness and breadiness out of the yeast in here too and then the fruity side of this one the sea buckthorn I think is giving you a hell of a lot of the sharpness you've got a lovely little bit of zestiness and smoothness from the cane set and then yeah the honey in the aftertaste you get a bit of the woodiness sitting there the honey and a bit of the smoothness from the cane set so yeah really interesting uh, beer this one and our first one from two years wild barrel series but yeah if this is one of their first attempts at this kind of uh, style, i think this is i think riku said that um this was only the second release that they've done of these i said that at the start this is the 2022 uh version if this is only the second release of a beer of this nature i think that's pretty damn good these guys are going to get very good at these as uh, time goes on they're obviously going to perfect their methods and tweak the recipes and stuff like this as they go but this is um a really really nice American style wild ale so I look forward to trying a few more of these from to you as uh, as we go forward but yeah I think we can leave it at that for um for this review actually I think that's everything we really need to say about this one a lovely kind of oily smooth American style wild ale and to you have done a very good job so uh yeah this was the lunatic a seven percent American style wild ale with quince sea buckthorn and honey from panimoitio to you in Latin Ranta in South Karelia in the southeast of Finland. Once again, a huge thank you to Riku for making this review possible. I hope that you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from to you and uh, if you have any thoughts on uh, any other ones in the Wild Barrow series as well. We maybe need to see about getting one of the other ones uh, next year. Um, so well, you can look forward to that. There will definitely be more. Uh, to you sour beers being reviewed on the channel at some point soon but again thank you for watching check out my social media check out to you social media and i will catch you guys in another review very very soon it's lange it's cheers
Keepies and Kitos, big shout out to Retail once again. The Lunatic from Panimo Tio to you in Lapin Lanta.